So we've already done a deep dive into all of the core functions and features in Android 13 that you need to know about, but because not all editions are created equally, here's a handful or 15 of the best new OS update features that we think you need to know about. So let's dive in. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. Thankfully, you can now properly adjust almost all aspects of the vibration menu and therefore the haptic settings within Android 13, thanks to a new enhanced sound and vibration mode. Google has added additional control, control bars for calls, notifications, alarms, and a new interactive haptics. For the first time, outside of Gboard that is, on Pixel you can manually adjust the strength of vibration based feedback for each individual notification type. The linear bar works in a similar way to volume controls. Joining this though is a useful new toggle that lets your phone vibrate before a ringtone kicks in, provided you don't actually pick up a call right away. However, for this to work you will need sound enabled on your device, vibrate mode won't work otherwise. The added ability as well to disable alarm vibrations from this menu is going to be especially useful to many of you out there, especially if you don't like it pinging at the side of your bed. Plus there is a brand new toggle to enable interactive media vibration. Few apps actually support the feature at this stage, but haptics are used alongside the speakers to give more oomph when consuming media, but they have definitely high value additions in Android 13. Material U is still at the very heart of Android 13 and Google has expanded the basic colors available for the device accenting with 16 colors that consist of seven simple tones and nine interesting dual tone pastel colors to choose from. We think this is perfect if you want a bit more control over dynamic color theming, but do prefer to choose fewer colors rather than the regular four presets, which do pick them from your wallpaper. It is a nice addition to have, but we really are hoping that we will get the opportunity to change fonts in a future, maybe Android 14 update. The Pixel 6 series has received numerous complaints over the in-display fingerprint scanner. And while it might simply be a coincidence, Android 13 has tuned the digit enrollment process or the fingerprint enrollment process. So now when you're setting up or adding a new fingerprint to your device, you'll get a more precise guide animation that shows you or helps you fully enroll your fingers. We're not entirely sure, it's unclear at this stage, but this hopefully does mean more reliable scans, but it's certainly far better than the abstract method that was used in Android 12 and Android 12L. Whether it means you're gonna get faster unlocks remains to be seen at this stage though. The introduction of a new photo picket in Android 13, at least for us is a top feature because of how this protects your on-device data and your files. It certainly has a great visual appeal. That older functional pop-up pane really did kind of lack because the new picker though only lets you app or lets apps access the photos that you do allow it to this is great for privacy but the visual aspect is also vastly improved here too as we mentioned when adding an image inside an application the new picker slides in with a docked bottom pane images are categorized and therefore easier for you to find and select on top of that too so we're a little bit ahead of the gun on this one, but coming later this year, Google is adding a brand new combined security and privacy menu that was actually detailed back at IO 2022. So it technically isn't unknown to people out there. This one-stop shop will fuse on device and account settings into one easy to manage area rather than relying on multiple sub menus and sections. And one of the most striking aspects is that it features color coded safety status indicators and prompts to remove applications deemed insecure or potentially harmful. This might help those who are not necessarily well versed in data leaks or if their account has been compromised. Adding an extra layer of protection to your mobile experience is definitely one that we give Google kudos for. Android 13 also adds two new super useful quick settings tiles that let you access and activate the dedicated one-handed mode and a much needed QR code reader without having to dive into extra apps. The latter is powered by Google Lens and works with any and all QR codes that you would want to scan. Previously, you'd need to open and launch that Google Lens app, then scan any QR code, but this actually works differently as it works from any section of Android, saving you time and effort just by swiping down that quick settings panel or opening it from there. Being able to enable and disable the one-handed mode without also diving into extra settings or the settings menu is another great time saver that will be very helpful to many people out there. It means you can switch it off or switch off this reachability mode at any time when you need it, 
or enable it when you need it wherever you are in the system. So it's also another great time saver that we're really happy that, happy that Google added here in Android 13. The shift of access buttons for the power and settings shortcuts in the quick settings panel to a now easier to reach bottom left position can't really be overstated, and it is especially useful on large screen phones. To help access Android 13 features, these power and menu settings shortcut buttons, they're right there at your fingertips in the bottom right of the quick settings panel. And this means that you don't necessarily need to stretch up to access two important areas. And because they don't work with that one handed mode has the benefit of cleaning up that notification panel. It may seem like a minor change, but this is gonna be really useful when you use this on a day to day basis. A major redesign has come to the Android 13 media player. It's no shock, Google loves playing around with this area. And it's one that we just keep seeing tweaks for year over year, but the latest changes are not only useful, they're also now more visually appealing and cohesive. If we had to pick out the outright top feature added in Android 13, then the media play redesign would be very close or probably the most likely candidate to be very, very top of the tree. Google's changes to the media player are not only more cohesive, as I mentioned, with material youth theming and its iconography, but it also re-adds functionality that makes it even more useful than it was previously. The standard play and pause buttons, they're now placed off to the right, as you'd expect of this mini player, while the skip and back controls are now placed either side of a reintroduced playback progress bar. This has an interesting squiggle effect for any current playback process. And as a playhead moves, a playback bar turns from a straight line to a squiggly line, therefore making it easier to determine just how much has been played or completed at a glance. Contextual app buttons like shuffle and time skips will also appear in this actual section, depending on what you're listening to or you happen to be watching, because this does work with video players too. Album art has returned in yet another throwback move. No matter the content, including videos, the this will envelop and theme the mini player. And it's definitely one of our favorite new additions here in Android 13. Another top feature in Android 13 is the ability to set languages on an individual app by app basis without actually having to adjust the entire system's default locale or language. You may be learning a language or even speak multiple dialects, which makes this a nice option to have at your fingertips. So long as apps support extra locales and languages, then you can just head to settings, apps, and then open the app you want and language and then change it to the desired local text because as we mentioned, you can set this on an app by app basis. It means it actually won't affect any other changes you've made elsewhere. And that's definitely gonna be valuable to people who speak multiple languages. Killing off or stopping rogue apps when they are sapping at your battery or running and using your background resources is something that we think is certainly a good feature added here in Android 13. There's a new section within a fully expanded quick settings panel, which will indicate just how many apps are running in the background on your device. Tapping this will bring up a floating pane that shows just what apps are actively running. Often this will include apps like Google Fit, Samsung Health, and apps that require tracking or device resources in the background to remain functional. However, certain apps out there may be running without your knowledge. You can just stop these if you wish from a floating pane, which is the same as diving into the settings menu and hitting that for stop. Again, saving you time and effort and putting it front and center in a nice, easy to manage way. While the quick tap function is limited to the Pixel 5 or newer, it's still a great option to have to automate specific things on your phone. While it's fairly feature rich, given it's a simple tap gesture, quick tap has gained an option to quickly toggle the flashlight or torch on your Pixel. We love this as it's not only useful, it actually saves time as you don't need to access the quick settings tiles or place a quick setting tiles, unlock your device, and then enable the LED flash at the rear of your phone. And this will be a great time saver for people who want access to a flashlight or a torch at a moment's notice. Android 13 has a new experimental predictive back animation that you can enable by heading to settings, system, developer options, and then searching for predictive back animations. In simple terms, when using the back gesture, using gesture navigation from the right or left side of your screen, if you hold this action or this motion, you'll get a preview of what screen will open once you let this go. Effectively, you see just where you're headed. While the back gesture is pretty easy to manage in Android, this will make it clearer just what screen is set to appear when you do go back 
in certain sections of your system. Sadly though, not many apps support this function just yet, but it is a great option to enable for future updates and we implore you to do this if you haven't done so already. Although we do think this particular feature should be a little more prominent, the higher battery usage notification when you view the battery menu is still a top feature as far as we're concerned. And this helps you better understand just what applications are sapping at your internal cell and could affect lifespan or reduce below regular daily usage. Tapping this prompt simply shows any applications that are draining the internal cell the most, and the pop-up panel also informs you that you may potentially run out sooner than the battery normally would. There is no option though here to force stop or disable these apps from this particular pane, so you'll need to dive into the deeper battery settings and force stop, but it does give you an information or a little bit of information to make that decision yourself. Android 13 features new fade in unlock animations when opening or unlocking your pixel and it's really refreshing when combined with all of the improved animations in Android 13 wholesale and it definitely feel, makes it feel a lot more like silk even when compared to Android 12. A new post unlock animation sees apps on the pixel launcher home screen fade and zoom into view which is a really nice touch. Other things like opening the settings and setting subsections is also improved with screens sliding and fading into view more cohesively. Animation easing has been upped and the result is just a trademark buttery smooth feel that Google's clean version of Android has more or less become synonymous with over the past few years. One of the most ridiculous changes in Android 12 was a full screen or wider pop-ups that filled the width of your display when opened. This was actually resolved for notifications and the quick settings panel back with the stable Android 12 release, but it has actually taken until Android 13 for particular pop-ups to be fixed. So if you have auto rotate mode enabled, when expanding the quick settings panel or receiving pop-up notifications, Cards and windows are now centrally aligned and smaller, making them easier to manage. And these options no longer take up the full screen width and therefore don't inhibit the rest of your Android view. The visual uplift is really, really welcome here. And it's something we really wish Android or Google would have tackled in the previous version, but at least it's fixed now here in Android 13. Editing Damien, just jumping in real quick to say that all of the wallpapers features throughout this video and a few extras that you might not have seen, they're available via the link in the description. We created these to celebrate the launch of Android 13. So you can find them, as I mentioned, in our Google Drive repository. You can put them on your own devices. So take care of them, set them on your own phones. But now back to pre-recorded Damien. So there are 15 of our top new Android 13 features, or at least added here in Android 13. We want to ask you, have you managed to install the stable Android 13 update on your device? If you have, are you enjoying it? And what do you think are the top new features here in Android 13? Let us know down in the comment sections below. It's always interesting to hear what people think. But as always, until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later.